Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Claudia Fedespicchiale, a urology registrar at Policlinico Tor Vergata, and I'm glad to have the opportunity to present our study on the prevalence of neurogenic overactive bladder and voiding dysfunction in multiple sclerosis patients. I have no affiliations to disclose. And so, multiple sclerosis is the most common neuroinflammatory disease in the world and it affects 3 million people. It is also a leading cause for lower urinary tract symptoms in the neurogenic population. And it is estimated that up to 80% of these patients suffer from LUTs as predominant symptoms at the diagnosis or during the evolution of the disease. However, there are not many studies on which kind of LUTs is prevalent in this population. Most of them uh, just focus on the neurogenic overactive bladder uh, which is considered actually as the predominant uh, urologic aspect in this population. So in this retrospective studies, study, we wanted to analyze the prevalence of neurogenic overactive bladder, but also avoiding this function in multiple sclerosis patients. We enrolled 114 of them at their first visit in our specialistic neurourologic clinic. We collected data coming from their subjective symptoms reports and data from voiding diary or self catheterization We also performed, when possible, uroflometry and post-void residual volume measurements. We used the definition of neurogenic overactive bladder and voiding dysfunction given by ICS. Actually, we decided to refer to voiding dysfunction and not to the trusor underactivity because we did not use a urodynamic, a urodynamic, so a functional evaluation. Practically, we defined as low urine flow rates when we add uh, at uroflometry a Qmax lower than 13 ml per second or 10 ml per second in males over 65 years. And we defined high PVR in case the PVR was above 100 ml. Here we have the results from patients' reports. Even though the most common symptoms were storage LUTs due to overactivity, um, reported by 80% of the patients, mainly urgency and frequency, 61% of the patients showed voiding dysfunction, particularly feeling of incomplete emptying and also weak or interrupted stream. When dividing the patients into symptomatic categories, um, we noticed that overactivity alone could be found in 46% of patients, and only 7% of the patient showed voiding dysfunction without any, sign, any signs of overactivity. However, 33% of our patients had symptoms of both overactivity and voiding dysfunction. Dividing our cohort in males and females and comparing the results, we found that there were no significant difference uh, about the prevalence of overactive bladder alone. Whilst the prevalence of voiding dysfunction without any signs of overactivity was significantly higher in males. The combination between overactivity and voiding dysfunction, it was instead constant and it was one third. In conclusion, we can say that our data confirm overactive bladder as the most prevalent LUTs in multiple sclerosis patients, found in almost one out of two patients with multiple sclerosis. But also voiding dysfunction can be found in up to 40% of patients and alone without signs of overactivity seems to be more prevalent in males even though this study does not consider the possible presence of bladder outlet obstruction. Overall, one third of our patients showed signs of both overactive bladder and voiding dysfunction. These should be taken in high consideration when planning the therapy in order to offer the best treatment op option to our patient. Thank you for your time and for your attention. Any questions is appreciated. Thank you very much.